Hello everyone, this is a video on job board navigation. So to take a look at this, let's look at the upper left hand corner of the job board where it says job board right underneath the logo tech metric. You'll notice directly to the right it says active because we are looking at the active job board. If you hit the drop down, you could quickly get to save for later. You can go to accounts receivable in case we're taking payments. You can always go to paid tickets and you can even see your deleted tickets. So if we pan further towards the right, notice there are two icons. Currently, we are looking at the column view. If you don't like this view, you can decide to change it and look at the list view. It's the same information that you have on the column view. In addition, you could probably fit more repair orders here. And then notice you have four lines to the left of the repair order number, so you can drag and drop them. So I'll put Frank down at the bottom underneath Jim. If I go back to the column view, it does reflect what I've done, but you cannot drag and drop these tiles, but you can do it in your list view. Completely up to you. Everyone at the shop can look at their own job board different. If we go down one level, you'll notice you have a job board search bar. So this will only search the job board itself. So if I'm looking for the 2001 vehicle, it'll populate it very quickly. If I'm looking for a, a name, I'll type in Jim and Jim Morrison comes up. Anything that you see in the repair order tile, you can search for it here and, and you'll find it. To the right of that, you do have a way to populate this by RO status. So these are all your statuses. If I just want to see the cars that haven't been touched, how many cars have been declined and which cars are in progress, you can look at them. To the right of that, you can also populate by employee. So if I'm dispatching work and I'm wondering what technician C is doing, he's got three jobs. Maybe I should give it to technician A. He's only got one job. Or I can give it to technician B. It looks like she may have, let's see, three jobs. You can look at them all, all at one time if you want to. You could do the same thing for advisors or anyone that you have as an employee at the shop. To the left or to the right of that, excuse me, you can populate by appointment type. This will isolate just your waiters or all the vehicles that have been dropped off. In tech metric, we call them stay with vehicles. So these will be your waiters. If we pan further towards the right, this is how you create repair order. And then you also have a hyper button down here at the bottom and you can create a new customer a repair order or an appointment from here. On the job board, you do have three columns, the estimate column, work in progress and completed. And the way that this works is when you first create a repair order, it will always land in the estimate column. Here, this is where you would build the ticket, do the diagnostic, do the inspection. And once you send that estimate to the customer and they approve it, that's the trigger that bounces it over into the work in progress column. So if a customer declined any jobs, that repair order will never move. So let's take a look at these. This one says not started because we haven't done anything to it. These are automatic statuses in this column. You also have requires authorization. Once we built ticket, built any jobs on the repair order, once we send it to the customer, it's going to change automatically to pending authorization. Once the customer approves it, then the repair order will automatically bounce into the work in progress section. If the customer said they want to decline everything, they don't want to do anything, it's going to say declined all. And at this point, you could either hit the three dots, you can post the ticket as a declined job, you can save it for later, or you can delete it. If Mean Gene calls up and says, hey, I changed my mind, I do want to do it, you can just authorize it and the ticket or the repair order will bounce into the work in progress column. So within each one of these tiles, you have a repair order number, customer's name, your make model, you got the license plate, tag number, unit number, how much has been built, how old the repair order is, and when do they expect to have it complete. So once we send out an estimate to a customer via email or text message, you're gonna get a paper airplane indicating that we sent this estimate less than an hour ago. Once the customer looks at it, the paper airplane is gonna turn into an eyeball and it looks like Mean Gene here declined this job less than an hour ago or about an hour ago. So once the customer approves it, it bounces into the work in progress column. Here, you guys have statuses, but these are manually added or changed. So if I'm waiting on parts and I notice, hey, the parts are here, I can hit the three dots in the upper right-hand corner and I can set my statuses.
anything from in progress to need to order parts on hold, which is a universal status, waiting on sublets and, and so forth. You can also hit the three dots and quickly complete repair orders. By hitting this button, it is going to automatically put this repair order in the completed column. Or once again, if you have access or the permissions to delete a repair order, you could do it here. So once you complete the work and you would do that within the repair order in the work in progress tab, the repair order bounces over into the completed column. Before you do that, notice that you do have your initials for your technicians, you have balances. If you get a yellow dollar sign, it means it's partially played. If you get a gray dollar sign, it means that they still have a balance due. If it's green, it means that they're paid in full. You also have a timeline here. So currently, the technician has completed this repair order. They've done 4.5 hours of 4.5, so we're 100% complete. If Frank calls up, I'll say, Frank, it looks like we're 33% done with your repair order. We finished an hour and a half of it, but we still have some time left. Give good information without even jumping into the repair order. Then once we complete it, it will bounce into the completed column. And here you have the same information. You got the uh, balance due or partially paid. You got your technician's initials. You've got automatic statuses. So the tickets or repair orders that are in the completed column, you cannot edit them. You can't add more jobs. You can't change technicians. In order to do anything to Johnny here, I need to hit the three dots and reopen the repair order. By doing this, it's going to bounce Johnny Cash back to the work in progress section where we can add more work or edit anything that is needed. In order to complete it, I hit the three dots and hit complete again, and it's going to push it back towards the completed column. You can also send a repair order to accounts receivable. So if Johnny has a charge account with us, he's going to pick up his car today, but he's going to pay next month or next week. We could send it directly to accounts receivable. And remember, any tickets that are sent there, you can always find them with your active drop down and you can go to all your paid tickets or any of your account receivable tickets. So let's travel to paid. These are all the paid tickets we've taken in so far. Here's Frank. What I'm going to do is hit the three dots and I'm going to unpost the ticket. I can navigate back to the original repair order or I can take a look at the invoice. For this one, I'm going to unpost it. By unposting a ticket you do, or repair order, you do have to have a permission to do so. By unposting it, it will add back to your job board. So now here's another Frank Stan, but this time he's paid. So even though we unposted the ticket, we did not unpay post the payment method. In order to complete this ticket again, we just hit the three dots to reopen it to make edit changes, or we can post again and Frank is completely gone. So this is your job board navigation. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with the rest of your team. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more helpful videos for auto repair shops. Have a wonderful day.